Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the 22nd day of December 2021. I hope you're all healthy and COVID-free today. I hope that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, and health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, trying to save lives along with those that are first responders also trying to save lives. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep our streets and sidewalks clean and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on those trying to help and deliver and rescue the victims of child pornography, of molestation, of pedophilia, of child prostitution, of prostitution and pornography as well, human trafficking and sex slavery operations, multi-billion dollar businesses in this corrupt system in which we live. Blessings upon those victims, for theirs is the kingdom also, and curses, double curses on those perpetrators who put these people in such horrible situations. Also, blessings upon the homeless. 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States, and numbers are growing with each disaster, with each typhoon, tornado, earthquake, what have you. Many people without rules over their head in the United States, as well as millions around the world. Blessings upon them, for theirs also is the kingdom, and blessings upon those that are seeking the help. There was a basketball game last night. Our New York Knicks defeated the Detroit Pistons 105-91, to and it was not unexpected that the Knicks should beat the Pistons because the Pistons had only won five games all year. They had not been hit as far as last night's game. Their team had not been as depleted from the COVID as ours had. They were missing a key piece, though, in Jeremy Grant. Uh, Jeremy Grant, I think he's going to be out for a while because he had surgery. I think it was on his thumb. He had surgery, and so... Um, uh, he'll he'll be out for a while. And Jeremy Grant, you know, as a side story, now suddenly, um, yeah, he'll be re-evaluated in six weeks. He's had a, a surgery to repair uh, UCL in his left thumb. So he's going to be out for quite a while. Kelly Olenek, uh had an MCL sprain in his knee, um, and he's going to be out for six weeks. So um, yeah, th- those are their two big losses as far as players are concerned. And Jeremy Grant, as I was getting ready to mention, also is suddenly involved in trade talks. Um, he came there because of his relationship with the general manager. But apparently, um, at this point, him being in his prime, he might be looking to a change of scenery, which is interesting because he came there. He was getting the same money offer from Denver and he came and t- took it at Detroit and he was Denver starting power forward and Denver was, you know, run making deep playoff runs, but that's another story. But last night, their team aside, and those are two, those are two major pieces. So they're missing Jeremy Grant and they're missing Olenek. Um, so it was not unexpected that the Knicks should beat them, but the Knicks are also, as you know, six players are missing. Six players players, mostly key players, are missing uh, for the New York Knicks. And so, you know, anything could happen, especially as terribly as we've been, the Knicks have been playing at Madison Square Garden. Um, in fact, they had a five-game losing streak at Madison Square Garden. So anything could happen and almost did, but the Knicks prevailed. And the, the MVP of the game to me was Mitchell Robinson. Oh, my gosh. Um, they had started making a run. Uh, in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, uh, the Knicks had got the lead to as high as 22 points at some point. At one point, uh, Detroit shot the ball terribly in the first half, but this is the NBA. So that's not necessarily something that was going to continue. I was expecting to grind it out win. Uh, the Knicks made it less grinded out. They made it more comfortable win by the end. But Mitchell Robinson, um, what did you say? I mean, uh, Let's go over his stat line first. He's 17 points. He's plus 24, 14 rebounds, six on the offensive end, three blocks. He was a man among boys against them yesterday. The only thing stopping Mitchell Robinson is his um, his sh- his health, his shape, being in shape. That's it. Once he gets in shape, you know, he's going to be a problem, as we thought he would be. Just that he's, as we know, the story is he had broke his, we know he broke his foot. 
uh, after breaking his hand. He couldn't do any work on his foot, couldn't run. He gained a lot of weight. He was about 25 pounds overweight um, when he came to the camp. He, you know, So he's starting from scratch, and now he's grounding into shape. I, I thought by the new year, you know, maybe early January, he would be in shape, and that's apparently what it's looking like right now. Um, so he was dominant. He really, you know, and this is the thing. Um, a lot of teams are going small ball right now for the speed, the quickness, you know, um, you know, they, they're using small ball. That's the seem to be the trend in the NBA these days. They're using small ball and they're using, you know, when they can, they'll get a five that can shoot the ball. Um, I was never wanting to be worried about that as far as the Knicks because of Mitchell Robinson's ability when he's in shape to get out to the three point line and then recover very quickly. Well, uh, from last week against Houston, it, it wasn't there. There was like a, I don't know what happened against Boston, but last week against Houston and then last night against Detroit, he was flashing all of those abilities. Um, and that's why it didn't matter because he was, he had a block out by the three point line. He was harassing them on the three point line from under the basket as well as protecting the rim. Um, yeah. When we get our, our team back <laughs> and he's in shape, I told you in the beginning of the year, I think you'll remember, I said the Knicks, with a healthy Mitchell Robinson, the Knicks are top three in the East. He has not been healthy in terms of either his health or his 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 um, physical condition, but he's getting there. And when he does, he's going to be a problem, and the Knicks are going to be a problem. Especially now, uh, now let's talk about Kemba Walker. Last night, Kemba Walker had 21 points. He was plus nine. It was one of the few games that both he and Fournier were both plus in the plus minus department. He had 21 points plus nine. He had five assists. He had eight rebounds, actually. He only had two turnovers. He did not shoot the ball well. He shot eight for 21 from the field, three of nine from three. Um, but he was a factor in that he was getting into the paint. And that's what, that's what unleashed Mitchell Robinson. Um, again, and I think all of us in Knicks Nation understand that one of the things we've been missing was a real point guard that could unleash a Mitchell Robinson, unleash a Obi Toppin in their full potential. Also, apparently, as we've seen, it unleashes Fournier as well. Uh, so that was offensively what was going on. Of course, the reason Kimba was benched was also made manifest yesterday when you saw two guys abusing him. First one was Saban Lee. Saban Lee ended up with 16 points, played 25 minutes. Saban Lee was abusing Kemba Walker, almost at will. Him and Curry Joseph. And then at times when um, when Kay Cunningham had, had the opportunity, they were all taking turns on Kemba Walker, which is why he's out of rotation. He could score. He could set up Mitchell Robinson. He could do a lot of wonderful things offensively. But somebody might ask, who's Saban Lee? And that's a good question. Because he's not, who he's not, he's not Trey Young, who we would have to face. He's not even Kay, uh, Pey Peyton Pritchard, who we did face, who also did the same thing. He's not, um, you know, Kyle Lowry. You know, he's not in, or, or, or Bradley Beal or Dinwiddie or Harden or Kyle or, or, or Kyrie Irving, who's coming back now. None of those guys is Saban Lee. And so that's the reason Kemba's out of the rotation. And I want to say this because some of y'all are thinking because I'm speaking against Kemba that I hate him. I'm not that type of guy. Y'all need to understand my channel. I'm trying to. I want the Knicks to win. I'm trying. I, I present pluses and minuses about everybody. Okay. So um, the thing is about Kemba, though, if, say, for example, and I said this last night, if the Knicks did not have Derrick Rose, Kemba would be Derrick Rose for us. He'd be that captain on Mob D. And he'd be perfect in that role for us uh, coming off the bench. He'd be tremendous. I, I really believe that. He's not a starting point guard for us. But if Derrick Rose wasn't with the Knicks, Kemba Rose be that dude. No question. Be that dude. Or IQ. You know, he be that dude. But we do have IQ. And we do have Derrick Rose. That's why he's out of the rotation. 
Okay, that's why. So what I liked about it, though, is he lifted his trade value. Because, and listen, Isaiah Thomas, who was out of the league, just got signed by the Lakers. And I believe at this stage, Kemba is probably better than Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas is a real zero on defense. I mean, complete zero. He can't guard anybody. Uh, Kemba at least can, t you know, he does draw charges. So he makes himself some sort of, you know, obstacle. Uh, but he'll be abused by the, by the league's better guards, especially in the East. Like I, I mentioned, just some of the guys that we have to deal with. Um, so you, you again, Kyrie Irving, Peyton Pritchard, um, Tyrese Maxey, uh, you know, Fred Van Fleet. He can't guard any of these guys. He can't, you know, it is what it is, but he had a good game last night and we were able to, to dominate with, like I said, with Mitchell Robinson. And again, also, with Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier had the second, I mean, it's really his third straight pretty good game. I mean, he played pretty good against the Celtics as well. He, played, he, he did score against, he had 29, I think, against Celtics, 20-something, and he had 20-something against Houston. Um, again, he's another guy that benefits from strong point guard play. And so he benefited last night from, from Kemba, and he had 22. Um, he's not, you know, a, a, you're not going to get a lot of rebounds, assists, and all that from Evan Fournier. Um, you hope he could be adequate on the defensive end and score for you. And that's what he did last night. He, he was, he was, he played 41 minutes. And so maybe he's fi finding a rhythm. The thing is, when you have a guy like a, uh, any player that's in the NBA that's weaker defensively, there's a formula for playing with that guy that you could be successful. The Knicks used it. Mike Woodson used it. And Larry Brown used it. Larry Brown used it when he had Island Iverson, who was a weak defender. Uh, Iverson was quick, and he liked to play passing lanes, and he get a lot of steals, but he was cheating. He was not really guarding his man. But what they did in Philly is they surrounded him with four very strong defenders and let him take, of course, most of the touches offensively. And that brought them to the finals. Okay, Of course, the Lakers, being a more balanced team, beat them very handily for the one in the finals, but that got them to the finals. Same with Melo. Melo was not a great defender either, but Mike Woodson surrounded him with defenders when he, when Mike Woodson came took over for um for Mike D'Antoni. He surrounded him with defenders, and Tyson Chandler was defensive player of the year while he was playing with Melo that year. So that's that, and so that was successful in terms of the Knicks winning fifty four games that year. So. That's the formula when you get a, a weak defender. You surround that person with defenders and you let that person score. So in our case, the problem, of course, we have two weak defenders. And then a sometime a defender, or whatever, well, he's a good defender, but he puts effort, but low IQ defender, put it that way, and Mitchell and, and Julius Randle. So you can't have two weak defenders. You know, it, it's going to hurt you, especially when you want tight defense, you know, so... You can't have both Kemba and Evan out there, you know, against better teams. It's not going to work. So that's why Kemba's out of the rotation. Also, they signed Ember to the three-year $54 million that he's getting. And really, as much as I would like them to move Evan Fournier, I don't think they're going to because it's a three-year deal. It'll be easier to move him next year, you know, at the trade deadline next year, 2023. Uh, and, and much easier in his third year because it'll be an expiring deal. Um, so we're kind of stuck with Evan Fournier. So, so that's why I'm a little concerned that he could impede the progress of Quentin Grimes. I'm a little concerned about that. So we'll have to see what happens. Tom Thibodeau is going to have to make some decisions. Um, when all of these guys get back, he's going to have to make some decisions. I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, I was listening to Mark Berman yesterday. I know that's kind of dangerous <laughs> for real, but he said some things that made sense. I give him credit when he makes sense, when he's trying to create drama, which he always is. Yeah, that's another thing. But what he said was Tom Thibodeau did not want Kemba Walker. Leon Rose wanted Kemba Walker. Okay. And if you notice, um, when Tom pulled him from the rotation, like when he pulled Frank Nilakina, for example, last year from the rotation, 
and they asked him about Frank Nilakina. And he said, Frank Nilakina, and y'all know the word he uses. He said, Frank is situational, right? And we know what that means. Situational means like there might be a minute left and we need to stop. So we'll throw Frank in there, right? Or 30 seconds left and we need to stop on a possession. He'll throw Frank in there. That's situational, okay? You're not in the rotation, but he might throw you in there for some situation, <laughs> right? But when he pulled Kemba, he did not use the term situational. He said he's out of the rotation, which is harder than what he would normally do. And the reason that Berman said was because um, he did not want Kemba Walker. He knew he was a weak defender and he didn't want him. Leon wanted him. So some of y'all might ask, was Leon going to force Tom? No, he's not going to force Tom. Tom's going to coach the way he coaches. And that's why I believe you got the 20 games. And that's why they kept asking him and he kept saying, I need a sample size. Remember that? And so he got the sample size and didn't work. Now, some of y'all are going to say, well, they've been losing since they replaced Kemba. True. True. He put Alec Burks there. But I think he's going to make a change again. Now, we know Alec Burks plays part-time point guard, you know, situational. Right. He's not a full time point guard. So um, he's got a decision to make. To me, it boils down to three players. He's not going to start Kemba. He never wanted Kemba, as it turns out. So it boils down to three players. We're talking about long term now, between now and let's say the All-Star break. It boils down to Derek Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, and of course, Deuce McBride. That's what it comes down to. Now, you know my feeling. <laughs> There's no question. I put the, I give the keys to Deuce, the young man, and let's go. Um, but that's up to Tom, and we'll have to see what happens. I don't think you're going to see Deuce McBride out of the rotation, though. I, I don't think so. So I think it's a high probability that he's either going to replace one. I don't think you want to start Derrick Rose long term either. So there's a high probability that he's either going to take IQ's position in the second unit and IQ starts or do starts. It's going to be like that. Kemba's going to go back out of the rotation, but hopefully they could trade him because he played en to me. He played good enough to show that he could definitely be in a rotation in the second unit. He just can't be in ours because his size is limited in terms of as a, as a physical person at six feet. And there's not enough space between IQ and D Rose in the second unit. It's just not enough space. So that's why he would probably be traded. I'm just, you know, to me, there should be a market for him now that he's shown that he could score. Uh, also playing in the second unit would preserve his needs. He wouldn't have to be playing as heavy of minutes. Uh, if we, he played 40 minutes last night, he's another guy. You keep playing him that kind of, you're going to see him on the sideline. He's not going to be able to play that type of minutes every night. Like Derrick Rowe, same thing. So playing in the second unit and getting 15 to 20 minutes, I think Kemba would be dynamite. He really would. So, uh, again, we just don't have the room, but he played well last night and, and he would be really good in the second unit. So I think they could make a deal for him. Nerlens Noel had a terrible game last night. I mean, he scored two points. He was minus 10, worse on the team. Uh, three rebounds. He did have two blocks. He just wasn't in sync last night. I don't know what's going on with Nerlens. Um, maybe he'll play his way out of it. But I have to be honest, I would not mind starting Mitchell Robinson and having Jericho Sins come in, to put, you know, in the second unit. I would not mind that. Especially, they changed the rules, if y'all didn't know. Um, the NBA, because of the COVID, they changed the rules on G League players. Now there's no limit. They can come up and play as much as the teams want them to. So there's no 50 game limit for G League players. So now Jericho can come up anytime that Tom wants him and play. So I don't, I would love to see Jericho Sims in that second unit. But again, you have to balance. The Knicks are trying to make a playoff run and they're going to make a playoff run. And Tom doesn't want too many rookies. He knows all the rookies that he has, and he knows they can play. He said so. But, I mean, he, he wants to win. <laughs> so he got to balance that. Um, 
especially if he's going to start a Deuce McBride at the point guard position. So uh, there's going to be some changes. I would not mind seeing Grimes starting, but like I said, I don't know if he's going to do that. Grimes will probably be in the second unit. Derrick Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, Obi Toppin, and you're probably talking about, of course, Nerlens Noel, right? Or, or Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson could start if he wants to. I realized that last night. He called, he called some, he was out of breath. Remember, he missed the dunk and he was tired and he, and he waved to come out the game. And as soon as he was ready to come back in the game, he started, right? Tom said there was something in Nolan's Noel's eye. That's why he didn't start, you know, the third quarter and Mitchell Robinson started. But I'm telling you, when Mitchell Robinson's ready, when he says he's ready, when he, his wind is up strong enough and he feels good, he's going to start. Okay. And as you saw last night, he should, but, we're going to wait for you to be in shape. Meantime, you're going to have Nerlens Noel. So between him and Nerlens Noel in the second unit for now, that's what you're going to have. So Alec Burks. So you're going to have to start Fournier. You're going to start RJ Barrett. Okay. Then, of course, you got the, again, Nerlens or Mitchell Robinson. Of course, you're going to have Julius Randle. Then your point guard, hopefully, will be Deuce McBride or Manuel Quickly. But it's going to be one of them. So now, Grimes or Burks is going to have trouble getting minutes. Let's see. That's a difficult situation that we're in right now with that. So Tom's got to make some decisions. The point guard, to me, is not as difficult because you really have three. You know, you have Derrick Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, and Dukes, and you can you can rotate them. That's not as difficult. And then you could make Kemba situational if you wanted to until you trade him. At this point, it's very fortunate that all of those guys are out because you can play Kemba and he can increase his trade value. But once that problem is solved, you got really RJ, Fournier, uh, Grimes, uh, uh, Alec Burks. You have all of those guys really for, for two spots, for the small forward spot and the set and two guard spot. And really you got to include Emmanuel quickly because he's also a two guard. So it, it becomes a bit of a problem <laughs> at this point. I don't know what, you know, and Tom's going to lean toward the veterans. I mean, you don't want to, you really want to see more Grimes, the way that kid could shoot, but we have to see what happens. It's a good problem to have, um, but I'm seeing uh, good signs going forward. So they play Washington, and believe it or not, in the standings, right, um, the Knicks are two and a half games out of the sixth seat. I mean, the Wizards started off so hot, we played them, and now we are actually two games from the Wizards. Actually, we're two games from the Wizards and Philly, who both have the same record, and, and that's Philly's in the sixth seat, right? So there is definitely opportunity for the Knicks to move up. The Knicks are seven and a half games from first. Now, it seems like a long way, but again, this is the East. Anything can happen now with Kyrie Irving coming back, even as a part-time player, which means what that means is that he's going to be playing in away games. The, the Brooklyn Nets are obviously the odds on strong favorite to come out the East. That's what I said. If they didn't have Kyrie Irving, I wouldn't pick them to come out the East. But if Kyrie Irving comes back and he's only playing half a season, which means there's a smaller percentage chance that he gets hurt, they're going to be rough, man. <laughs> They're going to be rough. So, um, yeah, that's Brooklyn. Then this, so you really, you're, you're fighting for the, the rest of the East as far as slot second through eight, you know, second through seven or whatever. Um, because Brooklyn will take, if Kyrie Irving comes back like it's rumored, they're going to be rough. They're going to be very rough. But the Knicks at this point, we could get into that sixth spot. Um, and we might be able to climb higher as Mitchell Robinson gets in shape. Again, all Mitchell needed. All Fournier needed was a point guard, you know, a real point guard. Like, Alec, again, Alec Burks is not a real point guard. He's, he was there good enough, you know, to get us by for some games when we need him and to help us close games, definitely. But he's not a real point guard. Um, Kemba Walker's a real point guard, okay? Defense is not mistaken. He's, he's a real point guard. Deuce McBride's a real point guard, and he plays both sides of the basketball. So, we in good shape. I like how we doing now. So, so if we get Washington on Thursday, I'm pretty sure you're going to start Kemba Walker again. 
I'm pretty sure you're going to start Kemba Walker tomorrow night against Washington. And, you know, it is what it is. Washington has both Dinwiddie and Bill playing. There's no protocol for them. Um, they, you know, um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> and so we're going to see what happens. Um, yeah, we're going to see what happens. Hopefully we can win that game. Right now, Knicks are 14 and 17. Uh, Washington is 16 and 15. Both the Knicks and Washington are three and seven in their last 10. We're going to see what happens. Now, last night, Julius Randle. Julius Randle is our problem child. Yes, he is. He's our problem child. Some of y'all still don't get it. Julius, see, so, and let me explain y'all something, man. Look, some of y'all got the idea that I think Julius Randle is the centerpiece to build around. It's not what I think. It's what it is. There's a difference. I'm not telling you I think, in my opinion, they should build around Julius Randle. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they have chosen to build around Julius Randle, period. It's not like I'm thinking they should do that. Y'all getting that twisted. And a lot of y'all refuse to re receive what is actually happening. The Knicks are building around Julius Randle. They signed him for a three-year deal, two years guaranteed with the third-year team option, Steve Mills and Scott Perry. Once they signed him to that five-year, $100 million deal, they are now committed to him. Just face that. They're committed to him. Now, they don't have to stay with him forever, but they're not trading him this year or next year. He's going to be here. And they're going to try their best to work around him. All of his faults notwithstanding. Okay? So, just don't get that twisted. I'm not saying it's my opinion. This is like, the sky is blue. It's not my opinion that it's blue. <laughs> it's blue. <laughs> you understand? Julius Randle is what they're building around. That's what they're doing. You may not like it. I may not like it, but that doesn't matter. That's what they're doing. Okay. So with that in mind, he's the fixture. Evan Fournier and Kemba, those were the quick fixes. <laughs> okay. Those are the quick fixes. And the good thing about those two quick fixes is they don't have to be around forever. If they don't work out, like I said, they could trade them. All right. So. Don't get it twisted, y'all. Some of y'all think, oh, you think Julius... No, I don't think Julius Randle is the centerpiece. The Knicks have made him the centerpiece. Period. Do you hear Tom Thibodeau talking about him after every game? Come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to get y'all into reality here. Whether it's good or bad, that's what it is. So, last night, this guy has six turnovers. And I mean, they were bad turnovers. When I say bad, there's a couple of ways you can have a bad turnover. And he usually finds a way to do all of them. One of them is a turnover at a critical time when you don't need one. That's, that's one bad one. The other one is when you're just embarrassed because somebody just took the ball from you. Like, give me the ball. <laughs> or you're stumbling over yourself like he did last night. He still ended up with 21 points, 11 boards, three assists. And that was a terrible game. He shot eight for 18, one for three from one for six from three. Did not have a good game. Did not. It almost looked like he was checked out of the game. Some of y'all mentioned that. It looked like he was checked out a little bit. I, you know, because he is the centerpiece. Um, if they start Deuce McBride, we're going to be fine. Even with that. Because he won't be trying to play the point forward as much. Tom backs this guy up. This guy, last night, for example, he said oh, he wasn't feeling well. I mean, <laughs> that's what he said. Tom said, well, you know, he played great. He wasn't feeling well. I was like, okay. <laughs> like I said, I'm not saying what my opinion is. I'm telling you what's happening. Okay. So Tom is focused on Julius as the best player on the Knicks and the focal point and the one that they're building around. That's what the Knicks are doing. They've, they've committed to him. All right. Now, that's why I say it be it's going to be good because we, we got enough young guns that a couple of them, I say one, but a couple of them are going to pop. And when they do, that's going to end the Julius Randle era as far as being the centerpiece. But until they pop, it is what it is. Okay. So, and, and like I said, the young guns will make manifest who's popping as we go through the season. Obi's already pushing. He's already pushing. Okay. 
Good news, too, is Taj Gibson played the three last night for a number of minutes. Did y'all notice that? He was at the three spot. And Tom said he had him at the three against Boston as well. He actually hit a three. He was one of two from the three-point line. And it looked good shooting. He'd been doing that since preseason. But imagine if Obi Toppin played the three. See, I didn't think he could do it. Well, he couldn't do it last year. He was terrible on defense. But Obi has gotten 100% better on defense. And so all he has to do now is work on his shot, which he has the talent to make that fall. Man, can you put Obi Toppin out there at times with Julius Randle and a Mitchell Robinson? And you and you put you put a point guard out there like a Deuce McBride or or an IQ or a D Rose. We're gonna be pretty good, man. We're gonna be in good shape, I'm telling you. So that's the situation. See, again, I just want to make sure you don't get to it. It's not my opinion. They're building around Julius Randle. But the build around is temporary in terms of just a season, two seasons, three seasons. Because when these kids start to pop, he won't be the centerpiece anymore. It'll be an obvious situation. Okay, it might be Deuce, might be Obi, might be IQ. It could be a number. It could be RJ. There's a number of opportunities here. So that'll be made manifest as time goes on. All right. Um, it is what it is. So he had a terrible game, though. I mean, his, his stats always look good. But it's the turnovers tell you. He had six turnovers last night. Whew, that was bad. Um, Burks. Burks had an all-round game. Really good all-round game. Seven boards, six assists, eight points. He had one turnover. Um, he shot the ball terribly, though. Two of ten. In fact, as a team, pretty much the Knicks shot bad last night. He was two of ten. Julius was eight of 18. Kemba Walker was eight of 21. Fournier didn't even shoot well. Nine of 24. He shot well from three, four of 11. But they didn't shoot the ball well. As a team, last night, they shot the ball 44% from the field, 33% from three. And that way we got over, really, because um, Detroit couldn't hit the broad side of a barn last night. And half of it, it wasn't really the Knicks all the time. They just missing open threes. And so they shot 24% from three and 36% from the field. Now, I will say this. The from the field, 36% had a lot to do with Mitchell Robinson. They, there was a couple of times where y'all saw that people were just so intimidated. One time, say... Uh, Lee was coming down. He saw Mitchell Robinson and he half threw the ball up and didn't know what to do. And the ball just bounced out of bounds. It's almost like a half shot because he was afraid of Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson was then there to swat that mess. So <laughs> that, but from three days was missing open threes. That, that was it. If it was a, if they was, a, if they were playing better or if they had a team that could shoot threes, we'd have got spanked again. But that's again, function of, Getting, getting out to the three-point line. Mitchell Robinson was doing it. Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier, not so much. Okay. Again, that's why we can't have both of those guys out there at the same time. But anyway, a win is a win. We'll take it. We got Washington in the garden on Thursday, tomorrow night. Um, I don't know who we're going to have back. I hope we have Obi and RJ at the least. But uh, it's going to be tough at the point guard position tomorrow night because Kemba's going to cause problems it's for them but they're going to cause problems for us. So (laughs) this is going to be interesting. Hopefully we can come out with another win. Um, Yeah. And then get some more guys back. I think all of our guys should be through the 10 days next week. I want to say next week, all of our guys should be done with the 10 days next week because, um, because the, the, the ones that were the most recent was Deuce. He was the most recent, I think. Uh, of the players that went. And so next week will definitely be the 10 days. So you're talking about uh, Detroit again next week, Wednesday, a week from today. I'm expecting all six of our players that are missing. Kevin, Deuce, all them guys will be back by next week, the 29th on Wednesday. So I'm that's my, that's my opinion. Uh, I'm thinking they'll be back by then. So if we could get them all back by then, we'll be in really good shape going forward. So we're going to see. But again, Tom has some decisions to make, but that's on him. I just want to see Deuce time continue because then the Knicks will keep winning. But anyway, we got the W. Washington next. Let's see what we do. Please enjoy your hump day. Be safe out there. Keep yourself healthy. Shalom.